Hello, welcome back to this lesson in engineering circuit analysis. We're talking about op amps, and specifically we're talking about non-inverting op amps. This is our first non-inverting op amp problem, and we'll talk about the circuit in a second, but there are two parts of it. First thing is we have an adjustable resistor. We call it R sub X down here. We're going to set the value of this resistor to be 80 kilo ohms, and the question, first part of the question is what is the output voltage? of this amplifier when that resistance is set to a fixed value of 80 kilo ohms. Second part we're going to do totally separately is going to be how large can this value of this resistor be to avoid saturation? To avoid saturation. So first of all let's talk a little bit about the circuit. We'll do some qualitative discussion about it so you can kind of get the thought process down of what you should be thinking about right away and then we'll jump into it and you'll find out this problem is really easy to solve. All right. First thing is we have an op amp with plus or minus 10 volts uh, as far as the power supply is there. So what that tells you is the saturation region has the output of this op amp over here, V out, can only be between plus or minus 10 volts. That's the linear region. Anything outside of that is what we call saturated. So that's number one thing. And then we look at the configuration and it is reminiscent of the non-inverting amplifier design that we talked about in the last section, but there's a couple of differences. First of all, we have a feedback resistance. In the previous lesson, the uh, theory, we called this R sub F. It has this value of this resistance coming to the inverting terminal here that's grounded. This is called R sub S in our previous discussion. Okay, then down here, this part of the circuit looks a little bit different than the circuit I showed you to derive all of this stuff about the non-inverting op amp. Here we have an interesting configuration because we have 20 kilo ohm resistor coming off the source, but then it's in parallel with this adjustable resistor, which then is tapped off and tied there. So this looks slightly different because in the previous section, it was just a source with a single input resistance or a single resistance in series going straight in. This resistor down here is, it was not present in the last lesson. So you might say, well, you're trying to trick me, right? Well, this is the kind of thing that you're going to see on your test. You're going to see a derivation of something. You're going to understand it. You're going to say, I get it. That's a non-inverting op amp. If I see that circuit, I'll apply this equation and I'm done. But the problem is in any engineering class, they're going to change it just a little bit. I mean, you can't just solve every problem the same as what you've seen. You have to use other skills and other thoughts and, and use some creativity to figure out how to solve it. So this one is slightly different. So the trip, the, 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 the trap that most students fall into is they start not really worrying about these resistors here and they solve the problem as if this wasn't even here at all or they do something weird like they add these two resistors together to figure out what this value might be or something like that and then they just kind of go about their bit and you get the wrong answer, okay? So we're gonna take it one step at a time. But before we actually solve the problem, I want to call something to your attention that you may or may not have remembered or realized from the last section, okay? The gain equation for the, uh, the non-inverting op amp, the gain formula, right? What was it, do you remember? It was one plus RF over RS. One plus this resistor value divided by this resistor value, right? Go back to the last lesson if you don't remember that. So what this means is regardless of what this is down here, it has no bearing or relevance on what the gain of this amplifier is, right? Also, we're putting a positive input signal here. Because this is non-inverting amplifier, we're going to get a positive output signal here. It doesn't get inverted, so we put 750 millivolts in. We're going to get some value bigger than that out because the gain of these equations always have to be one or greater, always greater than one, basically. So the output has to be bigger than 750. It might be 751 or it might be 750.3, but it's got to be bigger than this because the gain is always bigger than one and it's always positive. So it's always going to be a positive output. Those are qualitative things you need to be thinking about so you can check your answer. Don't make a stupid mistake. Second thing is that, well, I guess actually the most important thing is I wanted you to realize that you can find the gain of this thing without looking at anything down here. The value of this resistor doesn't matter for the gain. The value of this resistor doesn't matter for the gain. And the input voltage that you're sticking into the thing certainly doesn't matter for the gain. It's all defined by these resistors up here. So the gain we can calculate, and we will calculate it in a second. So let's turn our attention down to the bottom part. This is 20,000 ohms. This is now, for part A, 80,000 ohms. How do you handle this? Okay, you start doing weird things like adding or whatever, then you're gonna get the wrong answer. Uh, because, well, you'll see why in a second you'll get the wrong answer. So you have to think about it. There is basically a connection here to the input of this op amp, right? 
this entire thing, the voltage source, along with these resistors, if you were to put a set of eyeballs right here, you need to think about what is the inverting terminal, I'm sorry, the non-inverting terminal, what is that terminal C looking backwards? That's all that really matters. In the previous section, we modeled it as a single resistor in series with a source, right? But when we look at the diagram, we clearly have two resistors, which makes it a little more complicated. But really all that matters is what does it look like looking backwards? Remember that term, what does it look like? What does it look like? That should be ringing some bells for things that we have done from things we've done a long time ago. What you need to basically do is find a Thevenin equivalent of this part of the circuit. You cut it right here. If you cut it right here and look backwards, this resistor network is going to, you can find a Thevenin equivalent resistance in series with a Thevenin equivalent equivalent voltage source. That equivalency is going to be what you effectively are going to end up using in your calculations. Let me show you what I'm talking about. What I'm basically saying is that what I have right now, if I just look at this part of the circuit, forget about the amplifier part, the voltage source part is, looks like this. It's a voltage source that's connected to ground and you have a resistance here and a resistance right here. right? And this resistance is 20 kilo ohms and this resistance, we're fixing it to be 80 kilo ohms initially. And this is 750 millivolts. That's what we have. And if you think about it, you're tapping it off here. You know what? I don't, I don't want to make this too long because I'm going to use a little space on the right. You tap it off here, and we can say this is terminal A. And you can kind of invent a little terminal B that kind of is connected to ground here. Okay? So when you look at this, this right here is everything that I've drawn here as if you were to cut a wire right here and you just have a, a lead kind of hanging out and you look this direction, this is what you see. But what we want to do is we want to transform this because this does not look like, this uh, resistor network and source does not look anything like the one that I showed you in the previous lesson. And all of the equations on how to use everything and how to analyze it all were depending on it looking like the last lesson. What we want to make this look like is the following. We want to make it look like a voltage source, right, that's going to be in series with a resistor. This is terminal A, and I'll just put a terminal B here, like this, where this is something what we call V Thevenin, we learned that a long time ago, and this is something called R Thevenin. So if you imagine for a second here, if you could take this network and the source and invent or calculate, I should say, a new value that's going to be basically be the source that's going to sit here. We call it V7. It's going to be different than 750 millivolts. It's going to be something different, but it'll be a new value of a source here. And then we take this resistor network and we replace it with a single resistor that's in series with the source. We call that R Thevenin. That's the very definition of what a Thevenin equivalent is. You take any resistor network you want that has sources in it and you boil it down to a single voltage source with a single series resistance. Now, if you were to take this thing and connect it back up here, you would have a single resistor and a single source to ground. This looks exactly like, if you were to connect it to that amplifier, looks exactly like what we showed you in the last lesson. So you then can model this as a Thevenin equivalent, and then you can use all the equations and the techniques in the last section. Okay? Because this network with this source looks and behaves exactly like this network and this source from terminals A and B, which means from the amplifier's perspective. So how do we calculate these values? Let's do it real quick. It's really simple. To find the Thevenin equivalent voltage, all we have to do is find the open circuit voltage across A and B. So it's open circuit here. What's the voltage across the 80 kilo ohm resistor? It's going to be a voltage divider. So it's going to be 750. We're going to be working in millivolts here. I know I usually don't do that, but we're going to do it here. And it's a voltage divider. So what you're going to have is 80 over um, 80 plus 20. Now to be clear, I usually don't do this, but I'm, you know, I think you all have done this enough to see. This is not really 80, it's 80 times 10 to the positive three, and this is not 80, it's really 80 times 10 to the positive three, and then this is not really 20, it's 20 times 10 to the positive three. But when you have them in fractions like this, all of the 10 to the threes are gonna cancel out, so really the, the fraction that you get is the same as 80 over 80 plus 20, essentially. You multiply by the source, that gives you this guy, and so what you're gonna get is V Thevenin, is 750, and this becomes 0 0.8 in parentheses, that's the fraction that you get. So V Thevenin, since uh, we had 750 and we were in millivolts, is gonna be 600 millivolts. Okay, that's what that means. Now, for giggles, let's go ahead and find the uh, Thevenin resistance, R Thevenin. 
How do you find this? For a simple network like this, you look backwards between terminal A and B. Any voltage source that you see that's a constant uh, independent voltage source, you uh, basically put a short circuit in its place. So this 80 is in parallel with that 20, so you just calculate the parallel resistance. So what you're going to get is 80 kiloohms in parallel with 20 kiloohms. And from your basic circuit analysis, that's going to basically be 80 times 20 over 80 plus 20. Again, it's not 80, it's 80 times 10 to the positive 3, and it's not 20, it's 20 times 10 to the positive 3, but all those 10 to the 3s basically disappear when you divide everything out, and so essentially what you're going to get for R thevenin is 16 kilo ohms. All right, so what does this mean? What it means is our original problem gave us this, a source with 750 millivolts in this resistor network. What it means is functionally from this terminal, which is where the op amp is connected, this network looks exactly like a 600 millivolt source in series with a single resistor, which is 16 kilo ohms. Okay? So from here on out, you're going to completely ignore what this circuit actually is because functionally it's exactly the same thing as a 600 millivolt source with a totally different single resistor there. So you just ignore the original problem and you mentally replace it with what you've calculated because that matches what we learned in the last section. From here on out, the problem is trivially simple to solve because we said that the gain of this guy is one plus this resistor divided by this one. That doesn't you know, have any impact or, or, or dependency on anything else on the circuit. So we can just go ahead and calculate the gain right now, straight away, the gain if you remember from the last section, one plus the feedback resistance divided by that uh, R sub S from the top. So what you're going to have is one plus the, that feedback resistor is 46.2 times 10 to the 3. And the bottom resistance uh, is 3.3 times 10 to 3. So believe it or not, when you do this division, what you're going to get is the gain is equal to one plus 14, which means the gain is 15. Okay, so I'm going to kind of circle that. That's not the answer, but it's important. The gain is 15 of this circuit. So what this means is the gain of this guy is not dependent on anything down here. The gain is basically governed by these two resistors, one plus the ratio of these resistors. Notice the gain is bigger than one, as we said, that it must be for this type of amplifier. But the interesting thing is, remember, what does the gain mean? The gain means the, the output is equal to the gain times the input. But here's the thing that's, that's interesting. You cannot use 750 millivolts as the input voltage anymore. I mean, you could, but it, you're not going to know what to do because using this whole configuration was dependent on modeling it as a single source with a single resistor, right? And that goes back to the virtual short and all the analysis we did in the last section was all done predicated on that. So if you put 750 millivolts times your gain of 15, you're going to get the wrong answer because this resistor network was not in the original circuit that we used to derive all this stuff. The bottom line is the gain is 15 times your 600 millivolts. That is your new input signal, uh, basically as if this Devon and equivalent were connected there. All right, so the, the bottom line, the punchline is that in this case, the output voltage is going to be the gain times VG, but you don't, which is your input signal, but you don't put the 750 there. You say that it's 15 times 600 millivolts. Now, of course, I could put it in volts. I could put 0.6 volts there. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it like this, and it's going to be 9,000 millivolts. Uh, so you can move the decimal, and you could say that V output is equal to 1, 2, 3. That's 9 volts. This is the final answer to the problem. And now you can see right away, if you didn't pay any attention, if you calculated the gain and got 15, and you said, oh, well, my input signal is 750 millivolts, you multiply them, you're going to get a number bigger than 9 volts, which will be wrong, right? And it all goes back to the analysis we did in the last section. I don't want to go rehash it again, but essentially in order to multiply that input signal times a single gain to get the output, it has to be modeled as a single voltage source with a single resistor. So you have to find the Thevenin equivalent first. Notice we didn't even need the Theven Thevenin resistance. I didn't tell you that because I kind of want you to get practice calculating it. Um, you don't need the value of this resistor. All you really needed was the Thevenin voltage, the, the, the Thevenin voltage. So if you're in a pinch, that's really all you need. Now that's for part A. Part B, how large can this resistor be, this one, to avoid saturation? Now before we calculate it, I want to do a thought experiment for you. Let's just think about it for a second, right? Because sometimes that's helpful. 
So what we have here is 750 millivolts and we have a voltage divider because this is infinity ohms here. So the voltage that's across this resistor is going to vary as I turn the knob. If I turn RX all the way to zero, this is a short circuit and there's no voltage across it. But if I turn RX all the way up to a very large value of resistance, then, then since it's a voltage divider, most of the voltage would then appear across this resistor. If I get all the way to infinity and crank this thing up all the way to infinity, then this, the entire 750 millivolts will appear across this guy. And that would be what would appear at the, at the uh, terminal there, uh, the input of the op amp. So as I adjust this knob, I'm going to go from basically having a very small voltage appear across this all the way up to where I have the whole thing appearing across this. Now eventually, Rx is going to be so big that the input, that the fraction of this appearing across it is going to be so large that I'm going to blow out and amplify it too much uh, to, to get past the saturation region. So that's what's going on. That's what it's asking you is what is this maximum value that basically pops it up to, to 10 volts? Because the output is always going to be positive. You know, sometimes when you have the inverting configuration, you have to think about is the input positive or negative, and if it flips the sign of the output. Here you know you have a positive input, you're definitely going to always have a positive output, so all you have to worry about is saturating at plus 10 volts. So, to actually calculate it, um, we need to do a couple of things. Well, this whole uh, thought experiment of adjusting this was just to kind of get you to think about it, but the mathematically rigorous way to do it is basically that we're going to have to recalculate this Thevenin, um, the Thevenin equivalent source voltage at various values of R sub X. So we're going to let this vary, and then we're going to calculate the Thevenin equivalent. Remember, what this was was a voltage divider. It was this times this value of resistance divided by the sum. So we're going to do that, basically that entire process again over here. We're going to calculate that Thevenin equivalent voltage when Rx is allowed to vary. The input voltage is 750 millivolts, which is 0 0.75 volts. I'll just write it as volts this time. And then that voltage divider is going to be R sub X over 20 times 10 to the 3 uh, plus Rx. This is the fraction that, that comes from the voltage divider. It's Rx divided by the sum of the resistors. Make sure you understand that. All we're doing is we're saying this is now allowed, I'm sorry, let me go back here. This is now allowed to vary. In the first case it was fixed, but now we're going to let it vary. So the Thevenin equivalent voltage across it is going to be this times whatever this value is, which is Rx divided by the sum of the resistors. That's all I have. This times that resistor divided by the sum of those resistors. Okay, and we're gonna, I'm going to rewrite for completeness that the gain of this guy is 15. That doesn't change. The gain is fixed by these upper resistors, which never changed. That is basically staying the same from part one. So how do we proceed? Let's write an equation for the output. The output of this guy is going to be equal to 15, which is the gain, times whatever the input voltage is, but we don't use 750. 750 is not the input voltage. It's basically going to be the Thevenin equivalent voltage of that resistor network, which we're now allowing it to change as we turn that knob. So whatever Thevenin equivalent is, times 15, that's the output, right? Um, so now we can just plug in what we have from here. So we have 15 times 0.75 times this giant fraction here, which is Rx over 20 times 10 to the 3 plus R sub X. So there you go. Now here's the, 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 the trick. We already know that the output's going to be positive because the input's positive. And we're trying to avoid saturation, which is plus 10 volts in the positive direction. So what we need to do is now set the output to be a maximum of 10. So we now fix the output at 10, and ultimately we're going to find the value of Rx that gives you an output of 10. Anything bigger than that is going to continue to be in the saturation region even more. So we're going to set this equal to 10. That's the, that's the punchline. So what we do is we just write everything down again. We have 10 is equal to, we multiply these numbers together, we get 11.25. And on the inside, we're just going to rewrite Rx over 20 times 10 to the 3 plus R sub X like this. Essentially the rest of this thing comes down to solving for Rx, which is just a matter of algebra, but we're going to go through it anyway. So we divide this guy right here, we get 0 0.889 is equal to Rx over 20 times 10 to the 3 plus R sub X. Okay. And then in order to isolate it, we're going to take the entire denominator, multiply both sides so it cancels on the right and on the left. 
when you have this times this guy, you're going to get 1.78 times 10 to the fourth power. Okay. And then this times this, you're going to have plus 0 0.889 times Rx, because it's multiplied together. And on the right, you're going to have simply Rx. Okay. Now it just becomes a matter of, of algebra. Basically, you just subtract this guy to the other side. That gives you Rx. You divide by what you had in front. And just to make it clear, what you're going to get is R sub x is 1.78 times 10 to the 4 divided by 0.111. When you move this over, you get 0.111 Rx. Divide. And then what you're going to get, we're going to write over here. R sub x, 1.602. Times 10 to the 5, and that's in ohms. So if you want to, you can move it three decimals, one, two, three, about 160 kilo ohms. So I'm going to write it like this. Now I've got 1.602. As you you know do the calculations yourself, you're going to carry a slightly amount, different amount of decimals or whatever. So you might get a slightly different answer, but your answer should be pretty close to 160 kilo ohms. So basically, in this part of the problem, it's the same thing as part A. When you are given a variable resistor and you're asked what value can it have or whatever to avoid saturation, what you need to do is repeat the analysis again, allowing that variable to remain free. So now we let this uh, basically remain free. And so when we multiply this times Rx divided by Rx plus this value, then we retain that as the Thevenin um, the Thevenin uh, voltage, we multiply it by the gain of 15 to give us the output, which gives us this expression, and then we, we fix the output at whatever the saturation point is, and then solve for the other variable. It's very common in op-amp problems. You're going to see that kind of stuff a lot. So that pretty much sums it up. The main tricks here is that when you see something like this that doesn't quite match what the, uh, the non-inverting op-amp configuration should be, then you need to cut the wire right there, look backwards, and create a Thevenin equivalent to get an equivalent source in a series with a single resistor to make it match what the analysis was that we did so that you can then apply everything. If you skip that step, you're going to get the wrong answer. So make sure you understand this, solve it yourself, follow me on to the next lesson, and we'll get some more practice.